Well, Brad, you're a journalist, is that correct? Did you start out in journalism? Start out in journalism, wrote a number of articles in many different fields, biography, mystery, science fiction. How'd you decide on metaphysics? How'd you get involved in metaphysics and decide this is what I'm going to write on mostly? Well, to write on this mostly, I guess from my own personal experience as a child, I had a near-death experience when I was 11. I lived in a house that was beset by haunting manifestations and, <laughs> and had a number of uh, sightings and perhaps with um, an ET or a multidimensional being when I was about five years old. So that kind of got me started. I guess. Yeah, I had a very similar situation in my family where the, the females in the family were always metaphysical. And I had a near death at six and then went on to have many psychic experiences. And that kind of pulled me into where I belonged, I guess. I didn't really have a choice. I was just tugged along every inch of the way. You two are new, relatively, re, relatively newlyweds, aren't you? Yes, uh, about four years now. I, too, had a near-death experience, <laughs> quite a few, as a matter of fact, and many close calls. Oh, um, but, yeah, we've only been married four years, but I separately have been involved in metaphysics, but background very strange in nursing and theology. Are you really? Well, we have near death and yeah, nursing in common. <laughs> and what signs are you? Maybe that's something too. C could be. Could yes, be his birthday. You're an astrologist, so. Yeah, I'm an astrologer, right. numerologer, psychic channel. Right. So it's my it's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, a good old Aquarius. Well, or depending on who's charged. What book? Yeah. Right. What book? That's right. So. God, what is tomorrow already? The 19th? The 19th. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to do the numerology. Right. What year? Pi Aquarian. Wait. 30, 36. I, can I add that fast? Two, <laughs> one. You're a five. I'm a five? Yeah, you're a five. My favorite number. Okay, five is freedom, laughter, entertainment, fun, teacher. You want to live life fully. You want to taste everything, do everything. Probably were a little wild in your youth. No, not No, not, not you. I'm a six. This Mischievous, is, but not wild. Well, that's the, my best friend's a five, and you guys live. People like you. They like being around you. And it's, it's a great number. Now give me yours. April 24th, 45. You're two. Okay, that's a people person. You need people. You're a six two combination. The six says responsibility, caring, nursing fits. Absolutely. It's it's the counselor, nurse, doctor, it's the helping profession. You're most comfortable interacting with people. You like people, don't get me wrong, but you're you like to be up here doing things. You have to be enmeshed within. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's an interesting combination. It really is. It, it comes together as a seven, which is spirituality. So you're obviously are. working on the spiritual together. Mm -hmm. That's, That's wonderful. We are, I hope you'll say that this is a good... Well, I'd have sure. to do everything. Mm -hmm. I'd have to put it all together. But you, the your numbers auras together. blend beautifully. And that's what, for couples, that's what I look, look for. If I see a lot of spikes in the aura, then, it, then I think, hmm, there's some things they're not dealing with. But your auras combine very nicely together, and the color doesn't clash at all. Why don't you use that as an illustration? Tell us what you see when you're talking about our auras. What I see a lot between the two of you are golden shades. There's some pink as well, which either shows that you're both in a very affectionate mood or you're both a little horny, okay? <laughs> So who knows what your night last night was like. But the golden tones shows a, a very strong intellectual contact. Do you work together in writing the books? Mm -hmm. Okay. That would fit. Gold is higher consciousness work as opposed to yellow. And so it would show that you've been doing a lot more thinking about the depth of your books. Have you been doing that? We have been doing that, and it's interesting because someone took our aura photographs not long ago when both had gold stretching out all over. Yeah. So that's great. You're doing what you're supposed to be. Now, if later somebody says to you that pink has turned red, then you've got to say, okay, what am I mad at? What's going on here? But right now, it's really pretty together. And there's some purple, which again is a higher consciousness, which would lead me to believe that in this case, you're getting some information from other levels, other realms, other dimensions that are working with you. And that's the purple. And that fits. Now, you do this all the time. You just see spontaneously. You don't have to strain or no. squint your eyes. Or you don't go into trance. I do go 
into trance when I channel. And I go into lightweight trance when I do my readings. I'm an uh, unconscious channel when I channel, and I'm a conscious channel when I do readings. But when I'm playing like this, I can put myself into it enough that I can see them. And what I do is I just start feeling it. And once I feel it, it appears before my eyes. But touching, I'm, I'm a sensitive. Touching people is what gets me first linked to them. And if I can touch you, I can tell you all kinds of things. Did this talent come about when you had your near-death experience by any chance? I have been analyzing that. I really have because I have an intact memory of what was going on. I had the Asiatic flu and had an incredibly high fever. And the doctor thought I was going to be dead. And I was like that for three days. I remember being out of body, walking around, talking, talking to what I now know were guides and them saying, you may look around, you may listen, but you're not staying here with us. And I remember colors and a lot of things, and then I remember them saying, it's time to go back, and me saying, no. And they said, you have to, you know more now, you have to go back. So I don't know if that was the beginning, or if they activated me then, or what happened. Because I don't have a very vivid memory before six. Y you were how old when this happened? Six, yeah. That from our research indicates we have that five or six year old period where the activating incident as we call it where that happens and seems to set people on a particular path also the entities I channel had asked my late husband to hip hypnotize me and regress me back to age five or six because of another experience that occurred and in that experience we discovered that I had an abduction I was totally unaware of a UFO abduction yes and I had that one between five and six with my sister and what was, was interesting about that was my husband later hypnotized her without telling her what he was looking for identical occurrences identical the tapes are unbelievable they came back to her when she was in her twenties and they came back to me when I was ten but I don't think I've had anything since but I don't know what that was all about either. I just know that that caused migraines in my life for a very long time. And I'm very photophobic. I can't look into bright lights at all. But I think it was because I kept seeing a light being sh shown in my eyes. And that's, the tape is really hard to listen to. But the interesting thing was that my sister's was identical, verbatim. Was very it was. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that Joel was with us during this period. I think Joel was so much younger. Your brother Joel. Yes, he would have been four. And Fran would have been 12 when it happened. So consequently, I think he was safely in bed while the two of us were taken, taken away. Leave it to Joel to take the high ground there. Yes, huh? But now he's doing all the, the important scary, exciting things, and it's our time to lay back a bit. You say you're channeling these entities now. What Can you tell us something yes, about I them? Yes, I channel a group of entities that call themselves Equinox, and they claim that there are 300 of them from the known, civilized, dimension planes and planets, and they're here specifically to teach. That's all they do. And I accidentally came upon them there are no accidents but I was doing a class in seance work and I we had been working together for about oh eight months and we were I, I've always been a trans medium and we were bringing through people's loved ones well several of the people in the class decided they wanted somebody more important to come through but they didn't tell me well the gentleman beside me started I could tell he was about to go out but he was fighting so I was trying to help him I was sending him energy and I did this and the next thing I knew I woke up on the table 25 minutes later and they come through for the first time were you frightened after this happened no, because I, that the first time that I had someone come through without asking I landed on my forehead and ripped ripped my eyebrow off practically that scared me after that I knew that it can happen to me and I usually have people around me that can take care of me in case my late husband and my best friend were there and they took care of me and I knew I would be fine but it increased now and and I really like these entities I like what they say I like their feel their vibrations when they were first coming through and people would ask them questions like, is this my perfect mate or what job should I belong in? I would get really angry and say, why do they bother with these <laughs> mundane with questions? Yeah. And one day they said to me, you are so arrogant because if a person cannot survive in the mundane, they certainly can't work toward the spiritual. Allow them to be where they are. That's Allow good. them that's to that's grow. Nice. And when I thought about that, I thought they're right. I am arrogant. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've allowed them to pretty much much I give them one 
one day a month, the first Friday of every month I do this, and that's their time, and I stay out of it. And like I said, I'm an unconscious channel. I go away with my late husband, and he and I share some time together, and they do their thing. And it's really quite nice. Mm -hmm. And now I've um, become a host just today. We did our first filming for a new metaphysical talk show here in, in Arizona called Arizona Rising. Well, congratulations. And I'm That's thrilled. Great. I think Arizona can use it. And I'd love to have you two on sometime. Consider it done. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Are you writing something now? <laughs> Always writing something. <laughs> well, we'll tell the one book we're working on. It's called Undying Love. And you're, you might be a case in it because it's about people who maintain that contact. When we were doing filming for our segment on entertainment tonight, on our new book, Hollywood and the Supernatural, uh, we noticed that when they aired it on the network, they showed pictures from ghosts, Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore and Ghost. And suddenly it clicked like that. We've got all kinds of cases of people who have had incidents of love undying, love eternal. So... Uh, your experiences with your late husband would probably be perfect, wouldn't you say? Uh, absolutely. Well, it's even weirder than that. <laughs> it is. It's even weirder than that because two years before I met my late husband, I was in love with another man, and through circumstances beyond our control, we couldn't marry. And I met my late husband, and we spent 16 years together mm. absolutely ecstatically happy. One day, about three months after my late husband died, I get this phone call. It's this man I haven't spoken to for 18 years. And he says to me, what happened on October 16th? And I said, my husband died. He said, I searched for you all over this city. I couldn't find you. I didn't know what your new name was, but I knew something was wrong. You're giving me goose pimples. I think my late husband went and got him and said, come help her. So my, my friend and I have been seeing each other during this period of time. But it's, it's like unfinished business. But I still feel Ski with me all the time, nurturing me, loving me. It's hard to let go. It's real hard to let go when you've been really close. And I, I had thought about that. It's obvious that Ron and I could not complete at the time we were together because Ski and I had to. And then that happened, and now I'm completing over here. And it's very confusing. But I'm not ready to let go of my hu late husband. Not at all. How long ago did he pass? October 16th, 1989, so it's not yet a year and a half. Very recent. Yeah, and he was very metaphysical, and it was really interesting because the first four days, here I've been working with dead pe people all my life. You know, they're not foreign to me, they're easy for me, and I couldn't pick him up. And I was becoming scared. Oh, my God, what, what's going on? And I was in the bathroom, and I was taking a shower, and I was crying. And I said, where are you? And he said, I'm right here. And I said, I can't see you. And he said, you're a sensitive. You don't see. Just allow yourself to feel. I feel, said, feel, baby. I, exactly. Feel. I said, no, I want to see you. We're having this fight in the shower, right? And I get out of the shower, and our medicine cabinet door just swings open, slams up against the wall. And he said, is that enough? And he started laughing. My son comes tearing upstairs and says, what was that? I said, the medicine cabinet flew open on its own. So he tried to replicate it. Hmm. So then I told him it was your dad. About an hour later, one of my son's friends, at this time a 12-year-old, shows up at the house and says, I just saw your dad walking down the street. Wow. He was white. And this child, you know, is a born-again Christian child. He didn't believe in ghosts. And Sean said, Mom, he was here. So that was, I couldn't see him, but his friend could. And that was his way of saying, yes, I am here, believe me. We had a beautiful experience with my late wife. I was sitting at the desk typing. I looked up. I thought I saw her in the hallway. A few minutes later, Sherry came running and said that she had seen her. And in each case, she was smiling and giving a nod of approval. So that, that was beautiful. As a matter of fact, I'd said that uh, I had that experience, and he had not yet relayed to me that he had the same in his office. Oh, that's had wonderful. Had the vision of her coming down the hall. We have our own story about we, we feel like a ghost or someone from the unseen world brought us together. I think which, that happens a lot. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it's a really neat story. I'll let you start out again. Well, just, just very quickly, without bringing in names and so forth, um, I had not, we had met, several years ago and had not seen each other she was at that time doing filming she was acting and modeling and so forth <laughs> she's been in some movie of the weeks and so forth 
are in production. I had my own company and was working on funding for my own oh, metaphysical okay. school, but oh. it involved a film. <laughs> So she was out with her producer, director, whichever, was on her way to England. We met briefly, hadn't seen each other for years. I was living alone in an apartment. A friend of mine said, you can't live alone. You've got to come out. You've got to do things. So a woman I had not met before sat down beside me and said, oh, you're Brad Steiger. And I said, yes, I am. She says, well, I want to meet you. She sat there for a few moments. She turned to me and she said, oh, by the way, she said, uh, I bring you greetings from our mutual friend, Sherry Hansen. Dear mutual friend. And I, it didn't occur to me at the time, if I'm just there spontaneously, I don't know this woman, how could she possibly know I would be there and give greetings? So I said, is she in town? She's here in Phoenix? Because I thought she was in Hollywood or wherever. She says, yeah, she's here in Phoenix. And uh, so that I went home to my apartment, looked up in the book, there it was. She's also an ordained minister, Reverend Sherry Hansen. And I thought, shall I call? No, I can't call. I, well, it took me probably a, a month to call. And we then, after that, after talking, it was probably another month before we got together, at least. And then we formed first a business relationship, and then the relationship became more than that. This woman came back in town, said, I hear you're interested in getting uh, funding from filming. How about having dinner? I said, fine, you'll be happy to hear that I'm now a partnership with our dear mutual friend, Sherry Hansen. And this woman said, who? She says, I don't know a Sherry Hansen. I thought, what is this? I called Sherry on the other line. I said, do you know so-and-so? And Sherry said, I don't know such a person. So again, no. Now we have seen each other a number of times since, and she feels she's like our go fairy godmother at this point because she has absolutely no memory. But I heard this woman say, call Sherry Hansen. So there again, unseen entities can enter in and bring us together when we're supposed to meet. And to later confirm it, we had not told this woman the story. No. And a couple of years later, after we were married, in fact, it was just last year, we were in New York lecturing, Brad and I, and this woman happened to be in a little restaurant that we, everything was closed, we and we were done lecturing. We hadn't eaten all day. It was New York City. And we found this little tiny like Chinese restaurant upstairs off out of the way and there's a table of two people that you know Brad seemed to know and he walked over and and uh, said hi to them and we sat down and I said who is that and he said that's Mary Carolyn Meadows you know this this is a dear friend of ours now because uh -huh. but that was the first you know time that it hit him really that I did not know her, nor did she know me. They didn't show any sign of recognition. I, I, I believed it, but yet I heard this woman say. And I mean, he was almost embarrassed know, not to know. Her. And I said, "Well, introduce me," you know. And he kind of acted like he wanted to ignore the story. I said, "This is a perfect time. Let's deal. Let's talk with the story about the story." So he kind of gingerly turns around and we start talking. Now it happened that the guy that she was with was an exact double of Steve Martin, the comedian. <laughs> I always joke that he looks more like Steve Martin than Steve Martin. So he turns around and I think we both did a double take thinking it was Steve Martin. But to make a long story short, when we were introduced, she too, I did not look familiar at all to her. She knew that she did not know me and then when we relayed the story to her she said how could that be you know i i'd never said any such thing all of a sudden taken into a trance and channeled it that, we wonder what that's what we speculate she wondered if Again, maybe our, she was used to say something that she does does not remember by, whatever you're comfortable with that obviously said hey you two have to get together so now she considers herself our fairy godmother so <laughs> And furthermore, I'll have to add this, she works with dolphins, and she has a school with dolphins, and we're exploring another connection that uh, a dolphin may have saved my life from a shark attack, which is another one of my near-death experiences. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll pass that one. I have a real thing about sharks. Well, it's really been great uh, having a chance for the three of us to visit, and I know we look forward to to doing it again? Absolutely. I will too. And good luck on your new show. Oh, yes. Thank you. Best Hopefully of luck. we won't need it. No. no. It will be a success. I make my prediction. It will be a success. Thank you.